Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a mono black control deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, built around Invoke Despair, the new 5 mana rare sorcery from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, saying target opponent sacrifices a creature, if they cannot they lose 2 life and we draw a card, and then we get to repeat this process for both an enchantment and a planeswalker. So if the opponent doesn't have anything to sacrifice, they still lose 6 life and we get to draw 3 cards, which is a pretty good deal. And then Invoke Despair also gives us a ton of main deck enchantment removal, which is quite unique for a mono black control strategy, so that's a reason to like Invoke Despair. And then looking at the rest of our deck, it's your pretty typical mono black control strategy, featuring Blood on the Snow to wipe the board and potentially get back creatures or planeswalkers from our graveyard, supported by our snow mana base. And the planeswalkers we're playing include two copies of Sorin to make two three lifelinking flying vampire tokens and provide card advantage with the plus one. We've got Spider Queen, which can make a pair of 2-1 Spider Tokens with Menace and Reach. Whenever a creature we control dies, we get to put a Loyalty Counter on Spider Queen, so we can use her minus 3 again, and the zero ability draws a card at the cost of 1 life. And then Professor Onyx, as our Curve Topper, at 6 mana, can drain the opponent with Magecraft whenever we cast an Instant or Sorcery. To complement the damage from Invoke Despair, can make the opponent sacrifice their biggest creature, and can provide card advantage with the plus 1, making us lose 1 life, but then also putting some stuff in the graveyard that we can maybe get back, either with a Blood on the Snow, or with maybe our new removal spell, Soul Transfer, a 3 mana rare sorcery that can exile target creature or planeswalker, or return a creature or planeswalker card from our graveyard to our hand, but if we control both an artifact and an enchantment as we cast it, we can choose both modes, which can be quite powerful. And that's also the reason why we're playing two copies of Warlock class, as an additional enchantment to enable soul transfer can be played pretty easily for one mana, then we can level it up to provide a bit of card selection, putting additional cards into our graveyard to maybe later get back, and then on level 3 can deal additional damage to complement our planeswalkers and invoke despair. And then the author enchantment, of course, for copies of the Meat Hook Massacre, a staple in any black controlling deck, as a powerful sweeper that will gain us life and drain the opponent at the same time. And then the artifacts will come from Shambling Ghast, making treasure tokens when it dies, can also give a creature minus one minus one when it dies instead, as well as the four three mana ramp artifacts, including two replicating rings, which is a snow artifact, so it still produces snow mana to synergize with our blood on the snow. And then if we play it early, we can realistically get those eight replicated ring tokens if the game goes long enough, which tends to happen when playing a control deck, so we can generate even more mana. And then two copies of the Celestus, a legendary artifact, can maybe gain some life and provide a bit of card selection as it switches between day and night. And then we also have four copies of Eye Twitch as more cheap sacrifice fodder, which can learn when it dies, and we've got seven sideboard lessons to choose from, including double environmental sciences to gain two life and find a land, necrotic fumes to exile a creature or planeswalker, pass summoning to make some 1-1 chum blockers, mascot exhibition times two as an extra win condition, and confront a past to take out opposing planeswalkers, or maybe get back a planeswalker from our graveyard. So between confront a past, our one copy of Abandoned Mire, which can also be channeled to get back a creature or planeswalker from our graveyard, gets a discount for every legendary creature or planeswalker we control. We've got our double soul transfer and two copies of Blood on the Snow, so we've got a ton of graveyard recursion to keep getting back our planeswalkers over and over. Then rounding out the deck, two copies of Deadly Dispute, a nice follow-up to our various one-mana creatures, as we can sacrifice them to draw two cards and make a treasure token to help us ramp, double Infernal Grasp as additional instant speed spot removal, and then I think we've covered everything except for the mana base, four copies of Hive of the Eye Tyrant as a powerful creature land that can exile cards from the opponent's graveyard, then 18 Snow-Covered Swamps and two copies of Field of Ruin to deal with opposing creature lands. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Some early creatures into a Meat Hook Massacre to gum up the ground. And then try and ramp into Professor Onyx. Go with Shambling Gas in case we draw Deadly Disputes to make more treasure. Opponent appears to be Blue Rat's control, maybe. So not really the matchup where we want to draw all these one drops or Infernal Grasp, for that matter.
Our hand's very well suited to beat creature strategies. But just can't control. It's gonna be pretty tough. Hazard Exile Sight Twitch, so no learning. And then if our opponent plays the 4 mana Kirin, I might want to play an untapped plan so I can pay the 1 extra mana for Infernal Grasp. It's probably okay. That opponent's just gonna foretell a card instead. Now I can play Hive. Now it's gonna be a gold span dragon, which I'll still happily kill. Now, the one concern with uh, activating Hive is a Demon Bolt killing it. I think it's still worth it to get the attack in. And then... I might not be able to play Onyx if they Demon Bolt my Hive, but so be it. Get rid of probably Hazards in case they have Leer to replay that. And then we can always leave Shambling Ghast back to protect Onyx from Hall of the Storm Giants. Right, time for Onyx and Minus seems good. Opponent has a disruption, sadly. So they get to untap with Hinata, which is not where we want to be. Alright, so we can try a Meat Hook Massacre for 4. Probably play the Untapped Lands, attack with Shambling Ghasts. So I can play for another Jory Disruption. Although if they do have another Counterspell, I might need Shambling Ghasts back to block Hall. I guess I wouldn't quite be dead yet, but it starts getting sketchy. I guess maybe getting in for one still worth it. And that resolves. We'll make a treasure. And next turn we can deploy Spider Queen. Opponent is getting close to hard casting Magma Opus, which is quite effective against Spider Queen. Field of Ruins, interesting. I could field the Hall. If they turn it into a creature, I'll have to pay the Wart tax, which is three. So let's see, Field of Ruin, three mana. Then I don't think I'm gonna have enough to still attack with Hive. But if they don't go for it, then I guess I might be able to play Spider Queen, we'll see. Right, opponent just floats their mana. And then we'll play Spider Queen. You could have such power, but you are too weak. Demon Bolt takes care of her. At least it's no Magma Opus. Nothing more. My power is for annihilation. And her opponent's just gonna make a treasure, so they must have another one in hand here. Still surprised they 
cast a Demon Bolt when Opus can easily kill Spider Queen, dealing one damage to it. Invoke Despair. That deals a lot of damage here. I think I cast it after the Opus to kill the token. And then for now just attack. And then Meat Hook Massacre plus Despair quickly adds up. So there it is. Can float mana, but it's not gonna matter. Opponents at six. Invoke despair. And then a little short of casting Sorin, but we've got two lethal hives with a Meat Hook Massacre also threatening more damage. So they'll need another Magma Opus. So if I activate Hive, I can do it twice. So yeah, unless they have another Opus, we should be in good shape. Can't think of too many other cards that get them out of this. Can I also play Celestus first is a question. Maybe if I sack the treasure. No, I don't think so. And yeah, opponent scoops it up. Awesome, so close game here against Jeskai Hinata. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with uh, Keepable Hands. Turn 1 Warlock class, turn 2 level up, turn 3 Celestas into Eye Twitch. It's very mana efficient. And then the Meat Hook Massacre to maybe catch us back up. Opponent on a red deck, Mono Red, Fire Blade Charger. Do I want to play an Eye Twitch instead? It would mess up my curve because then I don't have a great 2 mana play. I think I still Warlock class. Spikefield Hazard also would have been a nice answer to Eye Twitch, exiling it so we can't learn. So level up. And what do we want? Soul transfers looking good because we already have artifact and enchantments. So let's grab that and then we can maybe get back Soren from the graveyard. Most likely still gonna go Celestis into Eye Twitch here. Rapier pumping charger. So that hits us for three. And now instead of Eye Twitch, I'm kind of liking Shambling Ghast as that potentially lines up better. So we'll see if they want to attack or move some equipment around. A rabbit battery. I imagine it's going to be reconfigured onto the charger. Second chump. I guess the etching here meant our creature good exiles. Yeah, I guess uh, I had to be a little bit more careful there. That's okay. We'll meet Hook Massacre for two. The reason I wanted to chump is to potentially kill the charger and then uh, finish off the rabbit battery with Massacre. Now our opponent gets to keep the rabbit battery around. So yeah, new cards. Kumano. Once it transforms, exiles our creature, so we don't get to dice triggers from Eye Twitch and Shambling Ghast. But still liking my position. Opponent's stuck on two lands. I'm gonna get to Soul Transfer back Sorin in a second. And Eye Twitch, pretty reasonable blocker here for the battery. I won't stop fighting till the people are safe again. And Transfer can exile Chandra. Battery attacks, happily trade. So next turn, I can soul transfer and then have three mana left over. Could cast like a random pest summoning. Doesn't sound all that appealing. Um, might want to get a mascot exhibition as a curved offer here. Get 
get back Soren. Could also just go for a smaller creature. Second plate right away. But Soren still seems a little bit better. No after party. I'm wiped out. And then next turn we can decide between our Planeswalker or the 7 mana lesson. A Raichu. Alright, that can hit pretty hard. Let's Exhibition. And then I'm happy to triple block to just trade for the Raichu if necessary. So they can equip everything onto the Raichu. Could still trade for it. I guess now the concern would be instant speed removal. But if I triple block, I don't think they'll be able to blow that up too much. Since I don't expect him to kill my 4-4, Kami's Flare kills a 3-2, but we still trade. Right, so we should be stable here. Opponent's top decking, although the Rabbit Battery giving something haste could still be scary. Although now Ghast plus Dispute could take care of the battery. And then Sorin make a Vampire to start gaining life, still have Infernal Grasp available. Alright, so this is where we want to be. Can even level up Warlock class next turn if we don't have anything else going on. Get to loot. And our opponent has seen enough. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And yeah, this hand seems keepable. Just need a third land and we're in business. And then we've got Artifact and Enchantment to enable Soul Transfer to maybe get back Sorin. And Warlock class can be leveled up to find land 3. Opponent with the Reckoner Raid to eventually make a 2-2 with Menace. And find our land, sadly it's tapped. But I think I still take it here. And then Spider Queen, we can soul transfer back eventually. Put on Mono Black. And a Skyclave Shade. Perfect target for soul transfer to exile. So play a Replicating Ring. And then. Could me took Massacre first, and then eventually Soul Transfer the Shade, we'll see. Berserker, but not followed up by anything else. So yeah, Massacre for two seems perfect, and then can play a tapped Hive. And our opponent's gonna be pretty far behind. Missing their land drops. while we get to draw cards with our Planeswalker. Our opponent replays Shade. And another Raid. Deadly Disputes, interesting. So if I were to Soul Transfer, I would have three mana left. Not really enough for anything relevant. I could Sorin make a Vampire, if they try and kill it I can Deadly Dispute. Sure they get to kill Sorin, but we've got a backup. Kind of like that more. So I kind of actively want my opponents to try and kill my Vampire so we can Deadly Dispute. Since I don't really want to sacrifice my Replicating Ring. And if the Shade attacks, I guess I can Chum Block and Dispute. Opponent does seem to have some removal here. Thirst. So that'll kill Surin, but that's still according to plan. Blood on the Snow also looking good, although did not draw a ton of 
snow-covered swamps so far. Okay, so now soul transfer. I can get back Spider Queen, although I wouldn't be able to play her yet. Blood on the Snow would be with three snow sources, so still not enough for Sorin. So, interesting spot. I guess we can soul transfer the shade. Get back Spider Queen. And then play Sorin. And then I could try plussing, although it would still die to the Berserker. Although that would happen either way. I think I still like plussing, hit my land drops. And then uh, power up or blood on the snow. By not playing too many creatures that die to it. So we'll see if they can double spell to kill Sorin. Eye Twitch learning for... Environmental Sciences could find another swamp. Yeah, Pwn is just a very low curve black aggro deck. So Berserker will kill Sorin, that's fine. So let's see, if I were to Field of Ruin, I get an untapped Snow Swamp. Four, five, six, then I can Blood on the Snow getting back Sorin, that seems powerful. Although I guess their opponent doesn't have any non-basics in play for me to use Field of Rune, so scratch that. Instead, can go for Spider Queen, Shambling Ghast, Eye Twitch, just make a ton of chumpers. And then uh, try and stall the board that way. That seems okay too. And then if iTwitch dies, we can look for Sciences, get a Snow Swamp, and then Blood on the Snow can get back. Maybe a Sorin or Spider Queen if she ends up dying here. Could also go for a Mascot Exhibition instead. A lot of ways we can play this. Power Word kill my spider. So they've got two menace creatures now, so they should be able to kill Spider Queen. So Spider Queen's dead. Could try and block white with my spider here to prevent a bit of damage. This seems okay. Or I can chum block to make sure I Twitch dies so we can get that snow source to get Sorin. Maybe that's better. Opponents down to one card in hand. At least there is blood on your hands. Get to make a treasure. I do what I demand. Opponents decline to kill Eye Twitch, that's interesting. So I cannot get the extra snow source now. I guess um, I can just play another Eye Twitch and pass. We've got a hive to block with as well. So I can play the long con. If our opponent plays their own hive, we can just field of rune to get the extra snow swamp. Opponent sends in the troops. Take four. I guess trading is fine. Could have tried to block with hive on the zombie as well. Prevent two damage. Maybe unnecessary for opponents holding more instant speed removal. And we'll get one mascot, one sciences. Could also go for a confront the past, actually. As another way to get back a planeswalker. And a dusk wielder. Alright. Time to wipe the board. 
In the meantime, replicating ring also ticking up. Destroy all creatures, force no mana, get back Sorin, make a vampire. And our opponent has seen enough. Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. This hand seems a little awkward with no acceleration, lots of expensive cards. Let's take a mulligan. This is better. And then... I think I get rid of Shambling Gas, so I Twitch can get Environmental Sciences to keep hitting my land drops, as opposed to just making a treasure. Portable Hole exiles it, sadly. There goes that plan. Well, our hand's not looking great. Thalia, I can kill next turn. I guess I could keep up Infernal Grasp, see if they maybe play Adlin I want to kill. Although Thalia making Invoke cost 6 is pretty painful. It's going to be an Elite Spellbinder. Alright, so I'll still kill Thalia. And then Spellbinder can exile Invoke Despair, but then I Twitch at least trades for it. Opponent actually exiling the I Twitch, that's fine, can just play it now. So we're one land away from glory. Brutal Cathar exiles I Twitch, that's fine. Spider Queen would be excellent here. Meat Hook for two, pretty good too. Hopeful Initiate could eventually blow up or massacre Apparition Exiles I Twitch. And I get to play Spider Queen. Opponent could animate their creature lands, which I would happily trade for my two spiders, although I guess Field of Ruin can answer it as well. Portable Hole number two gets rid of Spider. Opponent could attack with both and train the Initiate, and then we could trade for Apparition and then Invoke Despair deals with the initiate unless they want to sacrifice a cave, which they can turn into a creature. It's just going to be tapped. So this seems fine. So yeah, it might be worth it to Field of Ruin their cave first before we invoke Despair. But either way, it's fine. I did end up cutting one copy of Invoke Despair to make room for one extra basic land, just to make our draws a little smoother. Because you can't afford to miss a land drop when playing a strategy like this. So, yeah, probably gonna take a turn off using Field of Ruin on Cave. And then might as well do it now. One potential problem would be a Spellbinder off the top. I think I leave my illusion back in case of Adlin showing up, because then I can trade for the token and Invoke Despair would actually kill something relevant as opposed to just a 1-1. I'll take two. And Invoke, which will draw two cards here. Finding another Massacre and a Hive. Okay. Now I can start attacking. Adversary pumped twice, potentially. And a Spider Queen. Alright, so we've got options. Could even go for Spider Queen, just draw a card. 
and then not play Massacre. Would be bad if they play another Brutal Cathar to exile my token, but another Skyclave doesn't do it. So, not sure how many Brutal Cathars they have left. I guess another Portable Hole would also be bad. So I think I'm just gonna go Spider Queen make spiders. Keep it simple. And then hang on to Meat Hook Massacre for a little bit longer. Try at least to get two creatures with it. And Fateful Absence is perfect since we were gonna wipe the board anyway. So going for Spider Queen draw card would not have worked out. Opponent's attacks, just going face. I'll trump. Sank the clue. And I don't think we're losing this game, so I can attack for two firsts. Then Massacre for four. Then we can make a fresh batch of spiders. And Warlock class with the blood on the snow as leftover. Which can get back a spider queen as well. And our opponent packs it in. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. If we find land 4, Celestis into either Spider Queen or Invoke Despair. Could be too slow on the draw against a very aggressive deck. But on the play, at least we've got a chance. Alright, Field of Ruin, perfect, so... We'll be able to 5-drop on turn 4, assuming nothing bad happens to our artifact. Opponent and Naya Humans deck, yeah, that can be very aggressive indeed. So I'm gonna need all the help I can get. And hopefully we'll find a Meat Hook Massacre or Blood on the Snow at some point. Skyclave Apparition Exile Celestis, yeah, there goes our plan. Not what we wanted to see at all. So now my turn goes to waste. Can hope to Field of Ruin. A land at some point, maybe. Although I'm gonna save it for a creature land. So I'll take 6 down to 11. At least her opponent's stuck on 3 as well. And then now, either Invoke Despair or Spider Queen. Kind of liking. Spider Queen a little bit more, although it's not necessarily going to have favorable blocks. It just buys us time. Although Invoke Despair draws cards to help me double spell sooner, so maybe Invoke is still worth it here. If they sack Apparition, we get a 3-3. If they sack Aspirants, at least their creatures don't keep growing. Alright, we get our... Illusion. We've got Dispute plus Shambling Gas as a nice combo. Brutal Cathar actually comes into play during the night, because we played Celestis earlier, so doesn't get to exile my Illusion. Probably take four. Now if I play two spells, it is gonna switch back to daytime, so we have to be a little bit careful. Although I could just Spider Queen make two tokens, take it from there. Then next turn, opponent's likely to double spell and transform the Brute back. Wanna try and kill it with Professor Onyx's Minus, or just set up a Meat Hook Massacre. Could also play Shambling Gas and pass with Deadly Dispute available, with a plan of eventually uh, wiping the board with Massacre. Also an option. 
think I still prefer Spider Queen. Make two spiders. And then next turn we might be able to play Professor Onyx. With Snakeskinville growing the Brutes. Okay. Aspirant pumps itself. Opponent could have another Snakeskinville to pump the Aspirants if I try and double block it. I think we still bait it out. And then Spider Queen can make more spiders. It's going to be another snakeskin veil indeed. Do what I demand. So where Massacre fails to kill the Aspirant, Professor Onyx lines up quite well. And then we can make more spiders to block the brutes. My will cannot be denied. And if we can unsap with two active planeswalkers, we should be in good shape. This is my favorite part. Watch the life essence fade. Bone finds line five for Legion Angel. Alright, steady string of Legion Angels could be interesting. Brute attacks, so I could chump, and then maybe set up a meat hook massacre for four here. We will slay our Can make it five now to play around another snakeskin veil. So let me attack first. Professor Onyx can plus. Finding Infernal Grasp, I guess, is not bad with Professor Onyx offsetting the life loss. And then, yeah, Massacre for 5 would be the safest play here. That works. And probably okay to cash in Spider Queen for more blockers in case of any haste shenanigans. I will get what I want. Partners we can kill. And our opponent only had a single green, so even if they had another Snakeskin Veil in hand, they cannot cast it. So, Invoke Despair also seems like a nice answer. And then we can keep the Instant Speed Infernal Grasp for later. And the pressure is on now. Opponent's taking a ton of damage, and Invoke Despair prompts a concession. Awesome. So, yeah, we faced a wide variety of decks. Luckily didn't get matched up against a Seekas Chariot too much, because that's one card that our deck struggles to deal with. We're good at dealing with creatures, even planeswalkers and enchantments now with Invoke Despair, but large artifacts like a Seekas Chariot can slip through the cracks, and since we don't have a ton of instant speed removal, the chariots and vehicles in general can be quite problematic. So if a deck like Mono Green goes up in popularity, where they've got large creatures that survive Medog Massacre plus Isika's Chariot to dodge our sorcery speed removal, then I would stay away from a deck like Mono Black. But as long as the meta game is a bunch of white creature decks, then Meat Hook Massacre and Mono Black Control is exactly where you want to be. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.